Hello students, welcome to Pi Academy, the place for mathematics and science. Dear students, in the past three days, we just focused only on mathematics. Even we finished one of the tests as well. From today onwards, let us focus on 10th standard CBSC science. Do you know how many chapters that we are going to learn in this academic year? If you have seen the index of the textbook, you can say that there are 16 chapters. And these 16 chapters are to be divided to three branches of science, physics, chemistry and biology. In physics, we have five chapters, chemistry, five chapters and biology, six chapters are there. Do you know what are the chapters that we are going to learn? Yes, just let me tell you the chapters name one by one. In physics, the five chapters are, the first one is electricity, second one is magnetic effects of electric current, third one is light reflection and refraction, fourth one is the human eye and colorful world, and fifth one is sources of energy. In chemistry, we have five chapters, they are, the very first one is chemical reactions and equations, second one is acids, bases and salts. Third one is metals and non-metals. Fourth one is carbon and its compounds. And fifth one is periodic classification of elements. Another branch of science that is biology. This also includes very interesting chapters. They are the very first one is life processes. Second one is control and coordination. Third one is how do organisms reproduce. Fourth one is heredity and evolution. Fifth one is our environment. And the last chapter is the management of natural resources. These are the chapters that we are going to learn in this academic year. In our academy, I am going to teach two subjects. One is physics and second one is chemistry. And we have a lecturer for biology. Okay. Shall we begin the class? Yes. Before that, in today's class, we are going to begin a chapter in physics. Do you know what is the chapter? Dear students, you are able to guess the chapter by observing the material what I am going to show you now. Yes. Let yes. Dear students, here we have some of the materials. Just go through them. Bulb is there. Then series of lights are there. Cell is there, next switch, battery and laser light is there. Now, I am going to switch on, then here also, yes, now observe this, we have colorful lights and here the bulb is glowing, can you guess which chapter I am going to start? You are right, your guessing is right, that chapter is electricity. Now. Dear students, in today's class, we shall go for getting the information about electricity. So, let me write the name of the chapter. Please take a notebook and pen and write the name of the chapter. Dear students, just observe one of the simple circuit what you have learnt in your previous class. The same thing has been taken here also. Now, in this simple circuit, we have the components, a bulb, wire, cells and a switch. When I press the switch, yes, the bulb start glowing. Then, do you think that what has made the bulb to glow, then do you say that is it because of the wire only, is it because of cells only, is it because of switches only? No, all these components are much required to make the bulb to glow. Got it? Now, I am going to off it. Again, I am going to on it. Now, the bulb is glowing. Well, as soon as when I press the switch, the bulb started glowing. That means, something is flowing from switch to bulb. Is it not? What is that? Anybody can say that. Even the common people can say that the current is flowing. Yes. This, what is current? As we know, the meaning of current is to flow. Then, 
common people said that current is flowing but what actually is flowing being a student you should think scientifically can you say what actually flowing inside the pipe yes you are right they are charged particles then what are these charged particles how these are where these are if they are moving they must have energy where does the energy come from all these questions will come into your mind right now let us go for answering answering for these questions one after the other dear students you said that the charge particles are flowing in the void if the charge particles are flowing they must have the energy right because we have learned that any body which is moving gets the energy and we call that energy as kinetic energy if the charge particles are moving they should also get the energy then what do you call the energy acquired by the charge particles because of their motion it is electricity nothing but electrical energy so let me give you the definition listen carefully the energy acquired by the charge particles because of their motion is called electrical energy this is also known as electricity and the electricity can be measured because it is a physical quantity do you know the unit of electrical energy or electrical ele electricity yes it is joule why we know that joule is the si unit of energy and yeah as electricity or electrical energy it is one of the form of energy its its unit is also same that is why si unit of electricity is joule so let me go for writing the definition please take note yes dear students here i have written the definition of electricity once you go through that the energy acquired by the charge particles by virtue of their motion is called electrical energy is nothing but electricity and its si unit is joule you can copy the same just by pausing the video okay now let me go for continuing this here we are using one of the important term just go through the definition once the energy acquired by the charged particles we have already got information about the charged particles in our previous classes yes yes how the charge charges are obtained we know that the charges are obtained by friction you can just recall the concept some of the situation that where the body gets charged i'll just show the picture observe here you can observe that here the friction between two clouds the charges are obtained the friction on the ground the charges are obtained here the friction between the comb with the dry air the charges are obtained here also when inflated balloon is rubbed with the woolen the charges are obtained but in all these cases the charges are at rest they are not moving you can observe them they are not moving hence the electricity which deals with the charges which are at rest is called static electricity this is one of the type of electricity if it is so is there any other type of electricity yes it is there now you just recall the where our electricity we are using in homes industries schools colleges hospitals and all in many fields we have been using the electricity and the the electricity what we are using in these the charge particles are also there and these charge particles are in motion the electricity which deals with the, the charge particles when they are in motion it is called dynamic electricity is also called current electricity dear students in the chapter electricity we are going to focus on dynamic electricity or current electricity so from these simple situations we have come to know there are two types in electricity 
वन इज वॉट आर द वेरी फर्स्ट वन इज स्टैटिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड सेकेंड वन इज डायनामिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अब सॉरी यू हैव रिटर्न टू टाइप्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वन इज स्टैटिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दट इज द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी विच डील्स विथ द चार्जेस एट रेस्ट सेकेंड वन इज डायनामिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इट इज द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी which deals with the charges which are in motion here we have been using the word the charge then what is a charge how it will be from where does it come from so now let me tell you one by one the charge again i go for taking the showing the chart that where the charges are addressed you can observe here the the charge comb is attracting the small pieces of paper that means there is a force the the force which is existed between the charged particles when they are at rest similarly here also you can observe that there is lightning which is spread from cloud to the ground it is also because of the force the force which is existed between the charged particles is called electrostatic force for the existence of electrostatic force what is responsible it is the charge hence we can define the charge as we can define the charge as the property of a particle which is responsible for electrostatic force got it so let me go for writing the definition you should also write with me quickly look at the charge the definition of charge is the property of a particle which is responsible for electrostatic force is called a charge charge is denoted by the symbol q even the charge is also a measurable quantity hence it has si unit the si unit of charge is it is coulomb C O U L O M B and symbolic representation is just capital C and when you are writing the SI unit of any physical quantity it should be in small letter that is the rule to be followed if it is written with a capital letter it that indicates the name of a scientist got it once you go through the definition of the charge it is very important yes I hope that you have gone through that. now listen to me carefully here just we came to know what is charge then from where does the charge come from earlier we took an example that is when the comb is rubbed with with a dry air due to friction the charges are produced then where was the charge obviously is it not from inside the cone yes that is in that cone many small atoms will be there hence we can say that the charged particles will come from the atom the students just we should get some information about an atom and its structure atom and its structure which we had already learnt in our previous class Yes. Let me show you again one more chart of an atom. Here we have the chart. Look here. This is the central part of an atom where ninety nine percent of mass of an atom is concentrated. In that, some particles are there. These particles I have mentioned with the different colors, red and black. Here, red color particles. These are the particles. which carry the charge what is that charge positive charge and these particles are known as protons and what about the black one black one they do not carry any charge hence they are called neutral so and they are neutrons you can also observe some more particles which are revolving around the nucleus in different orbits 
and these particles will carry negative charge and these are called electrons got it so protons elect protons electrons and neutrons these are the fundamental particles of an atom and the charge sorry the particles that is electrons which are in the outermost orbit outermost shell and these are called valence electrons usually they are loosely bound to an atom hence they are also called delocalized electrons then if these particles that is protons and electrons and neutrons they have some charge means then what is that charge let us come to know that proton the charge of proton is it is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 90 coulomb and the charge of an electron is minus it is the sign the magnitude is same 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb whereas neutron it does not carry any charge hence its charge is zero got it yes here just i'll go for writing protons in that chart even i have shown their symbols as well proton can be represented as p plus 1 1 this is the charge Electron can be represented as E minus 1, 1, sorry, 0. Minus 1 is its charge. Neutron, it has no charge. We write N, 0, 1. This is about information about an atom and its structure. So, why it is necessary to know about the atom? Now, let me tell you that. Uh, one by one. Just we have come to know that protons are the positively charged particles and electrons are negatively charged particles. And these particles will be present in all the bodies. Now let us come to know what happens when these charged particles are brought each other. Here I will show you that. I am going to take the charged particles of same kind that is like charged particles it may be positive charge they get repel each other if negative charged particles are brought each other then they too get repel each other if one is positive and another one is negative they attract each other these are unlike and these are like charge particles hence we can conclude that like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other and this is known as law of electric charges once I state the law of electric charges like poles repel each other and unlike like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. Once we shall get the definition of charge, the property of a particle which is responsible for electrostatic force. Then if you go for taking a charged particle, call it as Q. So there is a region around this charged particle where electrostatic force is present and we call this region as electric field important one please do remember electric field we know about magnetic field like that it is electric field once I tell you the region around a charge where the electrostatic force is present is called electric field as we know that in a body some number of charged particles will be there the charge of all these particles is known as quantity of charge here I'll write quantity of charge quantity of charge is the total charge of 
particles present in a body or the total charge of electrons present in a body is called quantity of charge and the quantity of charge is denoted by Q and the formula that we used to find out is Q is equal to N into E. Then could you recall the SI unit of charge? It is coulomb. Suppose a body contains one coulomb of charge. Could you tell how many electrons will be present in that? Let us find out. So with a problem, write down. Write down with me. Write a question. How many electrons constitute one coulomb of charge one coulomb of charge how many electrons constitute one coulomb of charge very important in the examination point of view let us go for answering this with calculation here first let us write the given information how many electrons constitute one coulomb of charge here the quantity of charge is given it is Q equal to Q equal to 1 coulomb. You are going to find out the number of electrons. I call it as L. And we also know that the charge of an electron is it is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. Minus here when you go for writing minus here it is just indicates its charge. If you write plus it is proton. Now, we have a formula to find out quantity of charge that is Q is equal to N into E. We want the number of electrons. N is equal to Q by E. Where Q is 1 coulomb and the charge of an electron is it is 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. This is equal to 1 whole divided by 1.6 can be written in the fractional form as 16 by 10 into 10 raised to the power minus 19. Now this is equal to then 1 into take the reciprocal of the denominator 16 by 10 is there it is 10 by 16 and take 10 raised to the power minus 19 to the numerator it becomes 10 raised to the power plus 19 because according to law of exponent you can write a raised to the power minus n s 1 by a raised to the power n or 1 by a raised to the power minus n s just a raised to the power n. Now it is equal to it is let me write 1 by 16 into 10 raised to the power 1 is there here 10 raised to the power 19 is there you can write 10 raised to the power 1 plus 19 it is 20 because Again, a raised to the power m into a raised to the power n is equal to a raised to the power m plus n. This is equal to, now let us go for dividing 1 by 16. On dividing 1 by 16, let us see what what we get. 1 is not divisible by 16, put decimal take 0, 10. 10 is not divisible by 16, again take one more 0, then here you will get 100. 100. Now 16 how much are? 16 5 are 86 are 96. Then how much you will get? You will get 4. Put take one more zero. 16. 2 are 32. How much will remain? 8. Again take 0. 16 5 are 80. Remainder is 0. Now the one the value of 1 by 16 can be written as 0 0.0625 into now into 10 raised to the power 20 to express that in scientific notation I am going to take decimal after 6 it is 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 20 is there here as we have taken decimal after these two digits minus 2 it will be equal to 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 20 minus 2 is 18. So these many electrons will be present in one coulomb of charge. 
very important must be remembered it can also be asked just to form one mark like this how many electrons constitute one coulomb of charge you have to write 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 18 electrons charge is equal to one, co one coulomb similarly the question can also be asked like this how many electrons charge is equal to two coulomb that is you can write like this two coulomb in 2 coulomb of charge, it will be 2 into 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 18. This is equal to how much it will be? It is 12.5 into 10 raised to the power 18. Hence, we can say that 2 coulomb of charge contains 12.5 into 10 raised to the power 18 electrons. Clear up? Okay. Now, let's move on to the further part of this chapter. Dear students, just we have come to know that if a body is carrying one charge of one charge, then one coulomb of charge, then we can say that it is carrying 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 18 electrons. That means charge particles can flow in a body. Just I am going to take a cross section of a body. Here you may take that as conductor. Just this is the body. I am going to take a cross section, a part of it, a thin part of it. Here the charged particles will flow through this cross section. If you calculate the number of charged particles flow through the cross section in the unit time then we can say that it is the rate of flow of charges so this rate of flow of charges or electric charges is known as electric current got it it is also an important definition electric current means the rate of flow of electric charges means the number of charged particles passing through any cross section of the conductor in the unit time is known as electric current. So let me write the definition of electric current. You should also write. You should also write with me. Write down. Electric current. Very important definition. Electric current. The definition of electric current is the rate of flow of electric charges. The rate of flow of electric charges. The rate of flow of electric charges is called, is called an electric current. See here, just I told you that the number of charged particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in the unit time. Hence, we can write the formula to find out electric current like this. Electric current is equal to number of charged particles. How many charged particles? We do not know. So, just I'll write quantity of charges or charged particles. Quantity of charge divided by time taken. Quantity of charge divided by time taken is the formula used to find out electric current. Now, its symbolic representation, electric current is denoted by the symbol I. Quantity of charge is denoted by the symbol Q and time is denoted by the symbol small t. So, this is an important formula. As we know that the amount of current flowing in a body or in a conductor can be measured. Therefore, it is a physical quantity. So, if it is possible to measure, what is the unit that we use to measure the electric current? Let me write the SI unit of electric current is, it is ampere. And symbolic representation is A. It is a name of a scientist. 
and a merry affair. In science, we have a culture that to honor our scientists, we take a part of their name as the unit of some physical quantities. This is ampere. Ampere is the system of international unit of electric current. Now, do you know what is actual unit of electric current? To know that, we have to use the formula. What is the unit of the charge? It is coulomb. What is the unit of time? Second. Hence, we can write it as it is coulomb. Coulomb per second. And symbolically, it can also be written as C bar S. Or C S raised to the power minus 1. C S raised to the power minus 1. So, this is the SI unit. Now, suppose when do you say the current flowing in a conductor is 1 ampere? Now, let me go for defining 1 ampere. Even this can also be asked like this define the SI unit of electric current. It means you will define 1 ampere. 1 ampere current of 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb of charge by 1, one second. But how to define this? See, when 1 coulomb of charge particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in 1 second, then the current is said to be 1 ampere. I hope that you have understood it is also very important definition in the examination point of view. Once I repeat, when one coulomb of charged particles pass through any cross section of the conductor in one second, then the current is said to be one ampere. Please write the definition with me. I will write it when one coulomb of charged particles pass through Any cross section of the conductor, any cross section of the conductor in one second, then the current is said to be one ampere. Then the current is said to be one ampere. Now, symbolically it can be written as 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb by 1 second. Then, as I told you, it is a physical quantity because it can be measured. Then, what type of physical quantity it is? We have two types of physical quantities. One is scalar and second one is vector. Scalar is a physical quantity or a quantity that has magnitude only. Vector, a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. What about the current? Current, it has a magnitude. That is, we can say that 10 amps of electric current is flowing, 20 amps of electric current is flowing like that. It has magnitude as well as direction. We, even we can mention the direction of current will also. <coughs> and that will be discussed in the later part. So, we can write it is, it is a vector quantity, you are right, electric current is a vector quantity, why it is vector quantity, because it has both magnitude and direction, for your reference, I have been writing in the bracket, that is both magnitude and direction. Then another important question is, is there any device that we can use for measuring the amount of current flowing in the conductor? Yes, the name of the device is a meter. What it is? 
अमीठर क्या रख भाई अमीठर इज अ डिवाइस यूज फॉर मेजरिंग इलेक्ट्रिक करंट मेजरिंग इलेक्ट्रिक करंट दट इज आई अमीटर इज अ डिवाइस यूज फॉर मेजरिंग इलेक्ट्रिक करंट एंड वन मोर डिवाइस इज देयर इट विल ऑल्सो मेजर द अमाउंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट एंड बट यूजली इट इज यूज फॉर यूज फॉर डिटेक्टिंग द अमाउंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट फ्लोइंग इन द कंडक्टर सपोज यू गो फॉर टेकिंग अ कंडक्टर इन दैट सम अमाउंट ऑफ करेंट इज फ्लोइंग इफ वेरी स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ करेंट इज फ्लोइंग दट कैन बी डिटेक्टेड बाई यूजिंग अनदर डिवाइस इट इज कॉल्ड गैलोनोमीटर हिंस गैलोनोमीटर इज कॉल्ड करेंट डिटेक्टिंग डिवाइस galvanometer galvanometer is current detecting device current detecting device now how this ammeter will be let me show you that i have drawn it in a chart let me show you the device ammeter here we have the device called ammeter it is this is ammeter you can note you can notice that in that there is a scale of ammeter a needle and these are the two terminals the red one is positive terminal and blue one is negative terminal the positive terminal is connected to positive terminal of a battery and the negative terminal of ammeter is connected to negative terminal of a battery here i have written m a m a means milli amps so current when the current is small the small amount of current can also be measured by using a device called uh, ammeter in terms of milli amps milli means how much it is 10 raised to the power minus 3 likewise micron ampere micron means 10 raised to the power minus 6 here again one more ammeter device is there ammeter device you can notice that but this is here current is measured in terms of just amps so symbolic representation of ammeter or circuit symbol of ammeter here i'll show that circuit symbol of ammeter ammeter is like this we write a and it is to be encircled and we draw the line on either sides and we have to show the terminals then in that i have shown the scale of ammeter scale of ammeter and you know even here i have mentioned lc do you know what is lc lc means least count then what is least count the value of in the scale of ammeter you can see number of divisions the value of one division on the scale of ammeter is called least count very important one this one is also please note down least count least count of ammeter it is very simple the value of one division on the scale of ammeter here i'll write value of one division on the scale of ammeter is called its least count then we can go for finding the least count of this ammeter observe here so here one sorry you can notice that here 20 amps that includes how many division from 0 to 
जीरो एम ट्वेंटी एम थर्ड फोर्टी एम सिक्सटी एटी एंड अप टू हंड्रेड बिटवीन जीरो एंड ट्वेंटी हाउ मेनी डिविजन्स आर देर यू कैन काउंट देर आर टेन डिविजन्स सो टेन डिविजन्स इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी एम्स इफ इट इज सो टेन डिविजन्स जस्ट आई ड्रॉ फॉर द सेक ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव दिस इज द कैलकुलेशन वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक टेन डिविजन्स इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी मिली एम्स देन लीज काउंट ऑफ दिस अमेटर लीज काउंट मीन्स द वैल्यू ऑफ वन डिविजन ऑन द स्केल ऑफ अमेटर सो इफ टेन डिविजन इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी वन डिविजन इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी डिवाइडेड बाई टेन विच इज इक्वल टू टू मिली एम सो दे फोर लीज काउंट ऑफ दिस अमेटर Least count of this ammeter is two milli amps. Clear? I go for taking one more ammeter. In that, let me show the scale. Here is this is a simple one. Again, I'm going to write zero. You can notice that in this ammeter. So zero amp, ten amp, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, and so on. and you can also observe that the number of divisions 0 to 10 how many divisions are there 10 divisions so here of right 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 five here is 10 next 20 30 and so on here 10 divisions is equal to how many amps 10 amps then one division is equal to 10 Divided by ten, it's equal to one amp. One division is equal to one amp. This is the least count of a meter. The second meter in which current is measured in amps. In this one, in this meter, you can notice that in the scale of a meter, there is a needle. Observe at what division it is pointing here. Thirty is there. After that, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. So least count is one ampere. So it is thirty-eight. The current that is measuring in this ammeter is thirty-eight. Similarly, come to this one, where current is measured in terms of milliamp. Here, observe the needle. Here, after the Ten division. It is in twelve, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteenth division. In this ammeter, least count is two amps. Thirteenth division is there. So thirteen into two, it is twenty-six. Twenty-six milliamp. So this is how we can measure the current flowing in the conductor using the ammeter. Here we have used. some of the prefixes right the prefixes that we have used are one is milli milli means how much milli is 10 raised to the power minus 3 even you know that centi you have heard about centi meter like right centi centi means 10 raised to the power minus 2 even there is one more micron Micron is ten raised to the power minus six. You are also very familiar with the word nano. Nano is ten raised to the power minus nine. Likewise, angstrom, femto, pico, many are there. Just for the sake of knowledge, for this year you can remember up to here milli is. Milli is ten raised to the power minus three. Centi is minus ten raised to the power minus two. Micron is ten raised to the power minus six, and nano is ten raised to the power minus nine. Now we will move on to solve some of the important problems related to the concept current. Okay, right now side ready. Numerical problems, right. Dear students, observe numerical problems. 
solving numerical problems in physics sometimes you find it challenging but it is easy when you understand the method of solving the numerical problems just go through this here the question is calculate the current in a circuit it is short form of circuit ckt circuit if 500 coulomb of charge pass through that body in 10 minutes see wherever the numerals or magnitudes you find first underline them that is the information given in the statement here are write that information 500 coulomb coulomb is what it is the unit of charge right hence 500 coulomb that indicates quantity of charge q is equal to 500 coulomb then uh, charge pass through that body in 10 minutes minute means it is the unit of time and 10 minutes means we can write t is equal to 10 minutes the total time but minute is not the si rate what is the si rate of time is it is second convert this into second 10 into 1 minute is 60 seconds hence we can write 60 into 10 600 second what you are going to find out calculate the current so here i write symbol of current is i put question mark now we have a symbol you so we have a formula to find out the current what is current formula i is equal to q by t so both the terms are there what is q q is 600 time is time sorry q is 500 q is 500 coulomb and time is 600 seconds cancel them you will get 5 by 6 divide 5 by 6 directly you can write the answer or else let's go for actual division in the working column divide 5 by 6 6 5 is not divisible by 6 put decimal and take zero then 6 how much are 6 Nine sir, six nine sir, fifty four. You can go for six eight sir, six eight sir, forty eight. You will get two again. Take zero. Six three sir, eighteen. Again two twenty. Three sir, three sir, three sir. You will get recurring decimal expansion. So you can write it as zero point eight three 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 and so on. Approximately zero point eight three. What is the unit of current? It is amps. So amount of current flowing through that body is 0.83 amps. Clear up? Yes. Now to copy that whole statement, whole problem, you have to do. Don't forget to pause the video. After pausing, copy that complete. Next, second one. Go through this. Here also the same thing should be found. A current of 0.5 amps. Is drawn by a filament. Filament. It may be the electric bulb filament. What is that? Tungsten. If it is the filament that is used in electric iron bulbs, it is nickel. Got it? A current of 0.5 amp is drawn by a filament of an electric bulb. Here they are given. For how much time? It is for 10 minutes. If it is so, we are going to find out the amount of electric charge flow through the circuit. Amount of electric charge. See here, there are given three physical quantities. One is current. What about this? It is time. What about this? This is charge. Current is denoted by the symbol I. How much is that? It is zero point five amps. Time is denoted by the symbol T. How much it is? It is ten minutes. Again, ten minutes is given, but minute is not the SI unit. SI unit is second. Convert this into second. Ten into sixty second. It is equal to six hundred second. 
then you are going to find out the amount of charge. Quantity of charge is denoted by the symbol Q. Q is question mark. Calculation. I go for using the formula. What is that? Can you recall the formula to find out electric current? Yes. I is equal to Q by T. As you are going to find out Q, solve Q. Cross multiply T to the left hand side. Then it will be Q is equal to I into T. What is, how much is I? It is 0 0.5. Time it is 600 seconds. It is equal to 0.5 can be written as 5 by 10 into 600. 0, 0, get cancelled. Or 10 ones are 10, 60 is 65 are 6 is 30, 10 as it is. Q. What is the unit of charge? Very good. It is Coulomb. I is equal to 300. Sorry, Q is equal to 300 Coulomb. So, this much amount of charge will pass through the circuit. Clear up? Now, let's move on to the further part. Yes, dear students, here we have just solved two important problems on current. So, before concluding the class, let me tell you important thing. Whatever we are covering, please work out all that syllabus on the same day itself. Don't keep anything pending. And today, we have got a lot of basic information related to the chapter electricity once you recall. And don't forget to maintain the notes. Clear up? So with this, let us stop the class. Thank you.